trip to Latin America. The vice president speaking out against the Nicolas Maduro regime during his first stop in Colombia last night. He also elaborated on President Trump's comments on Friday, refusing to rule out military intervention in the country. What the world heard last week in the voice of President Donald Trump was resolve and determination. A determination not to let this moment slip, not to stand idly by while a neighbor collapses into dictatorship. Uh, what I can assure you is that we will remain vigorous uh, in our efforts to isolate Venezuela economically and diplomatically. Um, and I would anticipate additional U.S. action in this regard sooner rather than later. Meantime, Maduro's son, Nicolas Maduro Guedes, told state media that if the U.S. intervenes, Venezuela will, quote, seize the White House with rifles. Joining us this morning, retired four-star Admiral Robert Nader, former commander of U.S. Fleet Forces Command and former 7th Fleet Commander in Asia. Admiral, the vice president stressed the possibility of a peaceful solution in Venezuela, but again, military options still on the table, apparently. Is a peaceful resolution possible? Oh, I think so, and it's certainly, uh, Dagan, in the hands of the Venezuelan people. Uh, I think this administration is consistent, as has been successive administrations, saying that the diplomatic uh, solution is by far the best solution. Uh, Admiral, I want to get Andrew Peake in here. Andrew, do you have a question? Yeah, Admiral, uh, one of the problems, uh, in my view, is that the Venezuelan regime uh, has a monopoly on force, of course, and has even armed a lot of its supporters who aren't in the security forces to keep order and inflict political violence on its behalf, much like the Syrian regime did. Uh, we would like to see a peaceful solution, but is there at some point an opportunity or an argument for the U.S. to begin arming the opposition to Maduro in Venezuela? Look, uh, the, the, the solution in Venezuela is definitely the people of Venezuela. How that's done, be it through their own institutions, their own military, their own people ultimately have to resolve this. Whether we get involved uh, politically through the region, uh, with our neighbors, their neighbors down in uh, Central and South America, uh, that's the best solution. Uh, I, I don't want to predict how uh, we might assist this process, and, uh, but ultimately it does come down to the people of Venezuela. Hopefully their leadership down there, uh, their institutions will ensure a, uh, a democracy prevails there. Well, the threat to certainly people in the United States is very real. Admiral, after we found out a top Venezuelan lawmaker may have orchestrated an assassination plot against Florida's Senator Marco Rubio. This is a report in the Miami Herald. The alleged threat was believed to have come from the ruling party leader, Diosdado Cabello. While it was uncorroborated, federal authorities beefed up Rubio's security detail after the threat. Your thoughts on that? Well, I'd like to stress that this is speculation to this point. Having said that, any political leader in a nation has got to, uh, uh, the nation itself has to stand by those kinds of actions. And so that sort of uh, an event, should it happen, or should, there be, should it be proven, uh, is a uh, very, very serious uh, assault on American institutions and our government. I, I want to turn uh, to North Korea, the rising tensions with the Hermit mm -hmm. Kingdom. There's an editorial from Defense Secretary James Mattis and Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, an op-ed that's in the Wall Street Journal this morning, focusing on the regime of Kim Jong-un. They write together, the U.S. is willing to negotiate with Pyongyang. But given the long record of North Korea's dishonesty in negotiations and repeated violations of international agreements, it is incumbent upon the regime to signal its desire to negotiate in good faith. A sincere indication would be the immediate cessation of its provocative threats, nuclear tests, 
mit missile launches and other weapons tests. The op-ed comes as North Korea recalls key ambassadors from China, the UN, and Russia to the country's capital. A South Korean government official says that the country is hosting what appears to be a meeting of foreign diplomatic missions. Admiral, your thoughts on this op-ed? Because going into it, they don't want um, Mattis and Tillerson say they don't want regime change that they want denuclearization, but again, that they are, seem willing to talk to North Korea. Your reaction? Well, uh, as stated in the editorial, North Korea has a long history of utilizing diplomacy to just continue their uh, actions with regard to long-range missile development and nuclear weapons development. Uh, the United States appropriately is saying, enough, we're not going to be duped with this process and this approach any longer. Uh, they want and they need uh, a, an obvious uh, statement on the part of North Korea uh, preceded by actions. Uh, and I think their approach here stressed the importance to China of, uh, of negotiating this in good faith and through the uh, observance of actions on the part of North Korea, not just empty talk. Andrew. A A Admiral, uh, what would, in your view, a uh, campaign to eliminate North Korea's missile and nuclear capability look like? Well, uh, a military campaign or a, a military diplomatic campaign. campaign? No, a military Pardon? campaign. A military a, uh, campaign. Well, obviously, uh, that would be a campaign of last resort, as you well know. Uh, uh, only when all diplomatic efforts uh, are exhausted. But it would obviously uh, be preceded by a, uh, uh, an air campaign, a missile campaign. Uh, hopefully it would uh, be conventional, uh, but it would be ugly by any, any description. The ugliest uh, military uh, action we would have seen since World War II. You uh, spent your career in surface ships in the Navy, I believe. What, what role would cruisers and destroyers play? Well, as you well know, the cruisers and destroyers have a large number of surface-to-surface uh, -surface missiles, tomahawks. Uh, they also have a very uh, able surface-to-air uh, capability against uh, opposition aircraft, and uh, they have a missile defense capability against mm -hmm. the launch of uh, uh, missiles, whether they be conventional or nuclear armed. Admiral, thank you for being here this morning and covering so much ground for us. Admiral Robert Natter, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Dagan.